on today's show, we are going to talk the canoe brand. And uh, I think they finally got their boat pointing the right direction. They're paddling away. They're trying to get it done. And, well, I'm kind of excited because, you know, I, I talk quite a bit about this brand. And I give them some tough love. I mean, I just kind of give them some real tough love. But it's because I actually like the little brand. And I'm actually a stockholder of this brand. I owe over 400 shares of this stock now. And uh, it's kind of in my interest. I want to see them do well. And I'd like to actually have one in my driveway at some point. So, Know, is what it is. So I want to start this off where it's a two part. So the Channel 9 in Oklahoma, they did a story on this brand. But first, I want to just bring this up real quick so we can get this out of the way. This is the previous week of stock. They've done some trading, as you can see. They got down for uh, 22 cents on uh, November 9th, and they peaked. It was right at 37 cents on the 20th, um, and this is averaged out a little bit. But it's actually peaked up there, and I believe we're in the 30, yeah, 32 range right now currently. And this is uh, the 24th, so this is the day after Thanksgiving. So trading will kick back in Monday, and I'm hoping stories that we're about to watch was part of the reason why this is up. And if you can see right here, out of compliance. So they've been out of compliance since August. So I have a feeling around January, they better be nearing that dollar mark again, or else the brand's going to be pulled off the NASDAQ. So let's keep that in mind. But let's get into today's story. The company says these vehicles they're manufacturing are the first built here in the state since 2006. And you could see vehicles just like this on Oklahoma roads as soon as early 2024. Getting a first-hand look at canoe manufacturing facility in OKC. The startup electric vehicle company. Now, you guys know I've given this, this company a lot of grief. But uh, once again, I'm a shareholder of this company. I own stock in this company. And uh, I should be allowed to give them some grief. But it is nice to see them actually... It looks like they're now set up for manufacturing. That's taken quite a while now. I worked for a, a manufacturer, and I remember new trial vehicles coming in. We'd build a couple at a time. Engineers would go back over them, see where can we refine this, make this fitment better. And then uh, maybe a couple weeks later, you'd do a couple more. And then by the end, you'd run a couple hundred, and uh, they should be okay. And then you could start slowly ramping up production. So it looks like they're still, from my, my opinion, who somebody's been in this field, it looks like they're still early in the process here of just getting you know getting their prototype they're going from the prototype stage to what we'll call the p1 trial stage so it looks like they're uh just there but let's see more of the story company has plans to make up to a thousand vehicles for the state and they've just finished the first three these three are going to be going to work in the state of oklahoma now let me go right back to that real quick first off i'm happy to see that the vehicle actually looks kind of like what we were sold right you know it looks you see that that odd blue carpet though that looks like it's straight out of my grandmother's 89 buick i mean that's pretty uh not for me but i'm sure this will be options and this is just something there it, i'm sure it has something to do with the state colors of some sort the seats everything look about these seats they look comfortable that yoke where will we be at with that yoke when the uh, you actually see these on the road uh you know it didn't work out well for tesla even though i think this is a more reasonable look to that well, you know, jury's out on that just yet, but it, everything looks like what we were promised, which is a big plus because we've seen this thing since what 20, like 19, I think maybe we saw it in 19 or 20 when Jay Leno got to drive it. I believe it was 19, and that was an early prototype stage. So it does look like we're getting everything we were promised. Well, let's get back to the story of Oklahoma and they will be assigned to the administration into their pool. The plan is to send the vehicles to OMES, which is still deciding whether to buy a fleet from Canoe. We still have never taken a dollar from the state of Oklahoma, just to be clear. Let me, uh, let's pause there. This dude, like, he was about to be held up there. If you Did you see that? Like, this dude was like, hey, man, I didn't do anything. I didn't take any money. I promise you. <laughs> I think that was kind of interesting. Also, how many more microphones could they shove on this poor guy, man? I'm sure there's a few news outlets there, but it just looks like, man, this guy's almost a robot with how many microphones he's got on there. But uh, it is nice to see, you know, as they're branded for the state, as they should be. It is nice to see that they've got at least three of these out. And basically, Oklahoma is going to be a beta tester for them. They don't want to say that, but that's what they're going to do. They're going to throw these in the fleet. And who within the state, the state's not going to come out and go, these are garbage or, you know, these are great. It's not going to work in their favor either way. But it is a nice way that they can be beta tested. I'm sure it's like, much like modern manufacturing now. They can do on-air updates and they can get real-time feedback of how the, how the vehicle's handling uh, real-world conditions. Because no matter how many times you test these, real-world is 
is always different. That's why there's always recalls in vehicles is because they can't just do everything or else we would be 10 years prototyping these things before you got a final product that was flawless. So let's get back to this story, though. Um, but we've invested a lot in the state. We have to perform to get a payment, but it's money we already spent. During a time when the electric vehicle market is tanking, Canoe CEO Tony Aquila says he's confident the company's unique vehicles will weather the storm. Now, that was a good question. I'm happy that they didn't throw just, you know, they at least at, from what it looks like, they've asked some tough questions there. With the EV market slowly uh, kind of fading right now, the, you know, the early adopters all got their EVs. And now, uh, you know, people like me, maybe you who are interested in this, but not willing to, you know, throw down 60, 70,000 on a Tesla. Um, what is your concern with that? You know, the, the market's slowing down. Of course, they come out with this little truck, which uh, I think they need to get a PR team. I think through all of this, I think the CEO there could have been um, a little more, could have spun some of this a little bit differently. But ultimately, it is nice. You see the manufacturing plant there. Not a lot of people around there, though. But you do see them manufacturing stuff. And, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. Other the storm. The news plan is to create vehicles that will last at least three generations. It's quite a different model, and we focused on, you know, industrial, military, DOD, because they're buying components of this technology. Now, that's interesting, and this is kind of upsetting. As a person who uh, I, I've many times wanted to lay down the $100, but just with them early on when the ex real excitement was for this company, I just couldn't, since they're a startup, I just couldn't throw a hundred dollars at this company just yet that was kind of concerning what he just said there and this is where they need a true pr team they need somebody to teach how to spin and i don't feel like this is a, a really good way to spin this that they're going for the do department of defense they're going for you know contractors they're going for everything but the people who laid down the hundred dollars to help kind of get this thing off the ground it just seems like they're chasing they're chasing steady money and kind of forgetting about the people, the retail buyers, the consumers that might have wanted this vehicle. And that's kind of, that's alarming to me, even though it is nice to see these, actually they're building it. There's three there now. We've we've seen probably a dozen EVs that they've, you know, built now. It's concerning to me that, that you know, they went after Walmart, makes sense. They went after another company like that, makes sense that people that want them in their fleet. And Walmart, once again, it's much like Tesla with Frito-Lay with their semis. They're willing to take a little bit of a hit to help get these things going they're investing with this company just a little bit but for this guy to specifically say you know well we're doing it a little different we're going after the you know basically federal money that's concerning to me and i think it should be concerning to you but let's get back to this technology and they're training their workers this is the fun stuff ensuring they're confident using virtual reality before they start working on the real thing what did he, what did canoe promise us they were going to do when they moved to oklahoma they were going to partner with the native communities, uh, the Native American communities, and try to work with them for labor. I hadn't seen a, any uh, indigenous person in this plant just yet. So that's a little concerning. Now, understandably, you can see there's one on the rack sitting in the back here. They're still early in the prototyping stages, but you would think you would start kind of partnering with the uh, the local tribes and trying to get in some of that labor into the plant, especially early on into the plant, because I think it would be great ambassadors to the community. From what we can see right now, they've not done that just yet. Where it would go on the vehicle. Canoe is expected to create more than 1,300 jobs between facilities in OKC and Pryor, as they both continue to grow and increase production. Our whole thing is to be much more self-reliant and to be able to have an interchangeable workforce that is working here in Oklahoma. What does interchangeable workforce mean? I, I've watched this a couple times and I don't exactly understand that one. Now, as somebody who has worked in the auto industry, we would be trained on several jobs. So I, I do understand that part of it. But where? what is the, uh, I don't understand what that comment was about. And I also don't understand why this news, they I feel like they could have made the story a little bit better, but it is kind of interesting to me to see they're actually building these things. That's, you know, I've given them a lot of tough love because we haven't seen a lot of progress and the progress we still have seen in this video clip. I still feel like it's at a snail's pace because this was supposed to have been done in 22. They were supposed to be up and running by the end of this time last year. They were supposed to have already met goals. They've missed these by a year now, and they don't look like they're there yet. The brand's running out of money. It's that's that is what it is. They they by the end of the year, I'm not sure if they how many millions they have left, but it's not much. 
And, you know, they're doing everything they're supposed to, though. We do see them. There's robotics in the plant. They're actually trying to build it. This is not a scam, per se. They just need, they need, honestly, Apple or somebody to jump in and just throw a ton of cash at these guys so they can warp speed these things out, work with Apple, you know, use their their operating system through that. I think people would love it. And I think the, the shape of the vehicle lends itself to the Apple brand. So somebody like that needs to come in. You know, I don't see an Amazon or somebody doing that because they seem to, they, they, want to partner with Rivian, it seems like. But Apple, this could be a great place for them to uh, to launch their vehicle that they've talked about for many years. So we got some homework to do. In the comments, I'm curious, do you own stock of this company? And if so, how much? Where are you at with this? What's your investment? Are you happy to see where they're coming at? You know, did you buy low? You know, because I'm buying low right now and hoping for the best that it'll, uh, you know, blossom into something better. And did you put a deposit down on one of these when they started doing this in late 20, early 21? They started taking deposit monies and I was excited about it. I was that close to doing it, but my gut said, let's see what this little startup can do before we try to lay any money down with them. So comments below, let me know what you think, where you at with this. So whether it be two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, or the shocking EV that I'd really like to drive, this has been your All-Terrain Nation. I'm your host, David Boyd, and we're out. Peace, everybody. Love y'all.